Good evening, welcome to Left, Right and Center. I'm Vishnu Shobh on the program tonight. Video emerges of the inside of a spice jet aircraft which went through severe turbulence, which has resulted in two people being in the intensive care unit. More than a dozen people are injured as the aircraft went through severe bad weather. So severe on a flight between Mumbai and Durgapur that the passengers were exposed to relatively high G-forces inside the aircraft. What does that actually mean? We'll be discussing that. A part of the overhead panel in the aircraft collapsed. Oxygen masks came down, but very significantly, the aircraft, despite the serious episode, was eventually cleared to take off by an engineer and flew to Kolkata. Now, the aviation watchdog, the Directorate General of Civil Aviation, has a problem with this. How could this aircraft while there was a pending inquiry, be allowed by the airline to fly off. Now, that engineer has been derostered and SpiceJet's aircraft, all of them, at least those in this fleet, as I understand it, are now being investigated by the Directorate General of Civil Aviation. So, a safety audit of sorts. We'll be looking at just how serious this incident was. Next up on the show, ahead of key municipal elections in Maharashtra, there's the battle for competitive Hindutva with the BJP, the Shiv Sena, and the Maharashtra Nav Nirman Sena making strident remarks from loudspeakers at places of worship, calls to loudly chant the Hanuman Chalisa, to remarks by the former BJP Chief Minister Devendra Padnavis asking the Shiv Sena where they were when the Babri Masjid was demolished. That's our second debate. Later on in the program, and it's a one hour show tonight, the Vice Chancellor of a Tamil Nadu Medical College is suspended because medical students took an oath in Sanskrit instead of the Hippocratic Oath in English, resulting in a fierce battle at a time when the language row is back in the headlines in the state. And finally, the Prime Minister is in Europe. He meets seven European leaders in three days. Today, he's been in Germany. On a key part of that visit, we'll go live to Germany to bring you the details. But first, this video of just what happened inside that spice jet aircraft. What the Director General of Civil Aviation says is that there was severe turbulence during the descent period. Two of the passengers are in the intensive care unit at Durgapur. One of the passengers has a head injury. The other passenger has a spinal injury. Injuries to 14 passengers and three cabin crew in all. The injuries were related, talking about the other injuries, related to head, spine, shoulder, forehead and facial injuries. At present, three passengers are hospitalized. Oxygen panels opened up, oxygen masks fell off. The Directorate General of Civil Aviation has de-rostered the involved crew. The involved aircraft has been grounded at Kolkata. The DGCA is carrying out an inspection of spice jet aircraft across the fleet. A few more details. The autopilot got disengaged for two minutes and the crew manually had to fly the aircraft. And there are a couple of other very important points. The DGCA is investigating how an engineer of the airline allowed the aircraft to take off after this incident and fly on to Kolkata. He has been derostered as well. Well, earlier today, I spoke to one of the passengers on board this aircraft. Here's what he said. I didn't think so much because I had my seat belt on the right time. And the hand rest, I was going to cut the seat so that I didn't go to the seat. And this was a surprise. This was a surprise. This was a surprise. This was a surprise. And how much time was it for this turbulence? It was a surprise for 15 minutes. It was a surprise for 15 minutes. और आप हमें बताएंगे ये पंद्रह मिनट में क्या हुआ आपने क्या देखा विमान पंद्रह मिनट में देखा ये मैं क्या बोलू मुझे बयान करने में मुझे रोंगटे खड़े हो जा रहे मेरे अभी मैं मौत को मेरे आंख के सामने देखा हूँ ठीक है एक्चुअली मैं ये देखा कि मैं तो पूरा लास्ट सीट पे खड़ा था थर्टी टू सी मेरा सीट नंबर था थर्टी टू सी तो पूरा लास्ट है वो तो मेरा पूरा एयर क्या बोलते हैं फ्लाइट पूरा पैसेंजर मेरा सामने था जी पूरा सामने था मेरा ठीक है तो मैं पूरा देख पा रहा था आपके सामने पूरा कुछ तो देख रहे थे कि आप मतलब पैसेंजर पूरा जंपिंग कर रहा था नहीं ऊपर जा रहा फिर जंप करके नीचे आ रहा फिर जंप करके ऊपर जा रहा ऐसा हो रहा था मतलब इधर उधर पूरा हो रहा था उलट पुलट हो रहा था पूरा और विमान का जो ऑक्सीजन मास्क था वो भी नीचे आ गया था हमें बताया जा रहा था नीचे आ गया था ऑक्सीजन मास्क पूरा सब नीचे आ गया और कोई अनाउंसमेंट था पायलट या कैबिन अटेंडेंट अनाउंसमेंट बेल्ट लगा उन्होंने क्या बोल रहे थे लेकिन सीट बेल्ट लगाने के लिए तो बोल रहे थे कैबिन क्रू से लेकिन सीट बेल्ट लगाने का मौका नहीं मिला किसी को 
मैक्सिमम आदमी में सीट बेल्ट नहीं लगा पाया जो लगा पाया उसको ज्यादा कम चोट आई जो नहीं लगा पाया वो तो सीट से छिटक गया था फिर तो इधर उधर लग लग के सबका हालत खराब हो गया था पहले से सीट बेल्ट का साइन मैं वीडियो शेयर किया सीट का साइन नहीं था अमित जी पहले से सीट बेल्ट का साइन था नहीं पहले तो सीट बेल्ट का साइन नहीं था वो तो उठ गया था वो ऑफ कर दिया गया था और फिर आप कह रहे हैं कि बीच में बताया जा रहा था कि सीट बेल्ट पहनिए उसी वक्त ये टर्बुलेंस बढ़ गया हाँ ऑल राइट सो यू नो दैट वीडियो एंड विल कीप प्लेइंग इट गिविंग यू एन आइडिया ऑफ जस्ट हाउ सीरियस द सिचुएशन वाज इनसाइड जॉइनिंग अस नाउ Captain Amit Singh is the founder of uh, Safety Matters Foundation, which looks at aviation safety issues. We've also reached out to SpiceJet; uh, they've not responded uh, to our request uh, for them to come on board this program. But Captain Singh, um, the Director General of Civil Aviation, and this was a key point, has derostered an aviation maintenance engineer who cleared this aircraft for flight even after this episode. Why would an airline clear an aircraft for flight? after a serious episode when people land up in hospital before an inquiry by the dgca takes place uh, thank you vishnu this is a very important very pertinent question that you have raised from the regulatory perspective if you look at uh, the annex 13 which relates to the accident and incident and the dgca regulation this is categorized as an accident since people on board have been seriously injured mm -hmm. uh there are ways to distinguish between an incident and an accident but if a person on board is seriously injured it is termed as an accident after an accident uh, one cannot clear an aircraft unless uh the cvr dfdr is downloaded you have permission from the, the director the voice recorder the flight data recorder yeah go ahead correct so it is a detailed process of an inquiry and investigation which has to uh follow and uh, the whole seen the aircraft is an evidence mm -hmm. so once you clear it you are basically destroying the evidence because uh, uh, now we have evidence in the form of uh, the videos which have been shot by the passengers yes uh, you see the level of uh, chaos inside the cabin yes so these are all uh, evidences when you investigate how many masks drop and what was the state of uh, the people did the seat belts function or not did the seat belts fail were there any announcements so there are certain things which are recorded by the cockpit voice recorder a lot of things in this case since uh, it is dealing with the cabin majority of the evidence is in the cabin which has now been destroyed or uh, uh, been tampered with uh, once you clear an aircraft because so, it would have been cleaned evidence uh, has been removed captain so uh, captain issue. singh the fact that uh, the dgca the, the aviation watchdog has said Uh, that they're going to be conducting a safety audit or they're going to be inspecting they haven't used the word safety audit they're going to be inspecting all spice jet aircraft i at least aircraft as i understand it in this in this category the boeing 737 uh does that indicate what does that indicate that the dgca wants to see whether safety standards have been maintained across the fleet well uh, there are a couple of things uh, one has to look at uh from the maintenance perspective the aircraft has undergone uh, some amount of uh, g force uh plus i think 2.6 uh, or 2.7 g's yes uh the aircraft is sustained so what is the effect on the structure of the aircraft yeah uh, post uh, this accident so that is a critical part and uh, what are the maintenance standards so if you can clear an aircraft post an accident so how many such instances have happened or uh, Uh, not accidents but occurrences of turbulence similar turbulence has happened and the aircraft have been cleared so has this uh, had an adverse effect on the structure of the aircraft that needs to be looked at so it is a quality issue quality control uh, what is the quality manager doing the manager is supposed to report directly to the ceo uh, so the quality checks are an issue other things would be like the training of uh, the crew uh, the pilots and the cabin crew no but you captain singh tell me one thing let's just uh, look at this other i'm just reading from what the dgc has sent out during descent the aircraft experienced severe turbulence and the vertical load factor varied from plus 2.64 g and minus 1.36 g in other words there was intense turbulence and the pressures on the the, the physical pressures on the passengers at just under 3 g would have been very very intense it could have caused or could have come close to causing a blackout depending on how long the experience was and perhaps more worryingly with a negative g scenario it could have caused a red out as well 
when blood, blood rushes from your feet to your head. That's what happens in a negative G scenario. So all in all, uh, you know, it was it was physically dangerous for the passengers on board. Uh, rightly said, uh, you have to add the two factors, the positive G and the negative G. So plus uh, 2.64 and 1.3. So that is a cumulative effect. So if a passenger is sitting or standing in an aircraft, uh, you can imagine that suddenly the aircraft structure moves up and down. The passenger passenger remains stationary or at the present position and the aircraft suddenly hits you from the top on your head and then you go up with the aircraft. Uh, so that is a cumulative effect. So that is why spinal injuries are uh, more common in turbulence because uh, it is uh, more of a vertical thing rather than a front and back. No, so uh, I'm talking about effect. about vertical, uh, you know, I mean, the, the, the vertical load factor, even for passengers who were properly seated with seat belts on, a vertical load factor of just under 3 Gs is not something that you would normally experience or more significantly, perhaps minus 1.3 G. Uh, it's, these, these, it's, it's a physical constraint. It's physically difficult. You know, jet fighter jet pilots have an anti-G suit. It's meant to combat the impacts of G forces. Over here, these passengers didn't have that. And I think the question that does need to be asked is what about physical damage to the aircraft and its structure as well? That takes a lot of time to determine. And yet this aircraft was allowed to fly. Yes, the airframe could have had... Uh, uh, when we look at the airframe, it is not the cracks, visible cracks, but uh, those are the minute uh, microscopical cracks in the structure, or maybe in the engines or the blades. Uh, the rivets, bolts, anything. So it has to be a detailed uh, inspection. And that too, the aircraft lands at night. Uh, doing that inspection is not possible. So they would have done the basic minimum what you do for a hard landing. If you do a sustained 2.4G or 2.6G hard landing, or uh, whatever the manufacturer says. But this is more than that. This is about 4G. So, and sure. that too, a sustained. You don't know how much it has sustained. Right. So and, is and the we don't know the duration either. And I, yeah, you know, duration. So that, that's how much it has sustained, factor. so that will take more load on the aircraft. So, Captain, you know, a lot of our passengers, uh, I beg your pardon, a lot of our viewers would be wanting to know, as passengers on board aircraft, this is exactly the scenario which people are worried about, you know, traveling and then there's sudden turbulence of this sort. So, could this be clear air turbulence when an aircraft didn't or pilots would not know that something like this is there? Or could it be a case of flying into bad weather, knowing the risks which were involved and hoping to sort of thread clouds or a weather pattern and still manage to fly safely? Well, uh, everybody who has been to the northeast, uh, uh, east of Ranchi would know about Karl Besak, Norwesters, as they say. And the literal meaning is the fateful thing. Uh, it is a very violent and a fast-moving uh, thunderstorm which frequents... Uh, post 4 o'clock in the evening. Every pilot is trained on it. We do uh, monsoon training, yeah. uh, which is basically about uh, uh, the peculiarity of monsoons. But uh, what is more important is the pre-monsoon season from April uh, till about June when the monsoon sets in. Right. So these are uh, violent thunderstorms happening in the Chotanagpur Plateau, uh, which is around the area of uh, Ranchi, uh, say Durgapur. And the uh, pilots uh, call it basically the thunderstorm factory. Right. Uh, so, these thunderstorms are known to be violent and very fast. Yeah. So, if you are ahead of this uh, uh, thunderstorm, as I see from the satellite picture, it, w it develops very fast because the area gets heated up, the air rises, uh, it is a plateau, it sucks right. in air from uh, the Bay of Bengal, moisture, sure. and it suddenly, within minutes, it becomes the... Uh, yeah, no, no, and I think, you know, this, this sudden formation is something which uh, obviously investigators will be looking at as, uh, as well. Uh, could the airline not have flown on that route? Could it have been delayed? Or did this just suddenly emerge? And that is a very likely possibility as well. Um, aviation, uh, you know, takes a lot of time sometimes to come out with reports. Let's hope that report comes out soon in the name of passenger safety. Captain Singh, good speaking to you. Thanks very much for being with us. 